فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم There is no book like فتح الباري The way Ibn Hajar explained for Sahih al-Bukhari Are we all together? And this is from his brain Brothers, this is from whose brain? Ibn Hajar rahimahu Allah ta'ala 16 volumes book based on I think Daru Tayyib is 16 and Mu'assas to Risala I think it's 18 or 17 uh, Dar, is, Dar is Salam's publication, I remember it was 13. A bit different publication. The point is that this book is 13 volumes minimum. Sah? Are we all together, Fatul Bari? No. He wrote it from his mind, from his knowledge that he had. Rahimahullah. So Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, has been. There's a, this kitab, Sunan al Tirmidhi, if you really want to know about it. I'll go together. Sunan at Tirmidhi. If you want to know about it, there's a sheikh by the name, his name, a by, there's a sheikh by the name of Nuruddin al Itr. What's his name? Nuruddin al Itr. Nuruddin al Itr. Nuruddin al Itr has a tahqiq on this kitab as well. He has a what? He has a tahqiq on this book that we're studying right now, which is the Nusat al-Nabar, the Tawdih Nukmat al-Fikr. Nuruddin Itr has studied Sunan al-Tirmidhi. What has he done? He has studied Sunan al-Tirmidhi and, mashallah, what I gathered from it, or what I saw from his writing on Sunan al-Tirmidhi is amazing. Very good. He does a dirasa kamila, a complete study, a complete critical anal anal analysis on the Surah Al-Tirmidhi, on the Jami' Al-Tirmidhi, the ins and the outs. So I think you guys need to go to that kitab and look at it. It gives you a good understanding of it. He stands over it, hadith, hadith. If I'm not wrong, my memory serves me right. Daru Ta'seel Daru Daru Ta'seel Who republished Sunan Tirmidhi They published it and it's the best publication out there Sunan Tirmidhi Which are, who are the best? Daru Ta'seel is the best They've published Bukhari, they've published Abu Dawood And Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah and Nasai Are we all together? They published it their Tirmidhi is the best, their Bukhari is the best, their Muslim is best, and etc. In the Muqaddima, the introduction of their Sunan Tirmidhi, if I'm not wrong, I said, they used Nuruddin al-Itr's understanding of it. They made it as the introduction of Sunan Tirmidhi. To have an understanding of this book, Sunan Tirmidhi. Are we all together? And brothers, I really insist, that I urge you, Dalabatul ilm, students of knowledge, to try your best in your life not to die and you haven't really read these books. What books? Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, and Nasai. Six books of hadith. Are we all together? Do you guys know that the first book? That Ibn Taymiyyah memorized was what? Al Jam'a Bayn al Sahihain by Humaydi. Not Humaydi Abdullah ibn Zubayr, by the way. That is not the Humaydi Abdullah ibn Zubayr. The one that wrote Surah Sunnah, it's not him. The kitab that I have in my house, Al Jam'a Bayn al Sahihain, which is basically the author he combined between Bukhari and Muslim. Are we all together? It's a four volume book. Al Jam'a Bayn al Sahihain is what? It's a full volume book Shaykh al-Islam Taymi memorized. We're struggling to memorize what today? 40 hadith of Nawi. This small little 40, 40 hadith of Nawi that you put in your pocket. Some of us have never ever sat down and, and read all the 40 hadith in... In what? In the, the 40 hadith collection of Nawi. 
Some of us have never sat down and what? We've never studied, we've never, forget studying it, we've never read it. Are we all together? Do you not know the same way that the person has weird? Are you with me? Weird. Do you know what weird means? Does anyone here know what weird means? What is it? Yeah, it's a daily portion of Quran that you read. Every person should have a portion of Quran they read daily. Scholars also have a portion of a hadith that they read daily. Poor. If you read three, four, if, if you read three, four, I'm um, a four or five juz a day, then a hadith, some of the scholars, they would sit down and they would read it what? They would read it what? They would sit down and they would read it in sits. Some scholars, they read Sahih Bukhari in one day. They used to do that. They read Bukhari in one day. Some of them read more than that in one day. They would sit down and they go fast over the narrations, all the hadiths. So they familiarize themselves with it. So even if it means that you haven't memorized it word for word, at least you have the knowledge that the hadith is in that book. Are we all together? So even if you haven't, are we all together? Haven't ever studied it, listen to it. Just like sometimes you listen to Quran that you haven't understood. Are we all together? You do the same with the books of hadith. You go and you listen to them. There were recitations on the, on the internet where you can listen to the, all the books of hadith. Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Ibn Baj, and Nasai, all of it being read. So you listen to the chain, you listen to the, the hadith that I mentioned. Are we all together? And if you do that, your mind and your heart is going to push you towards what? Wanting to know what this hadith is. Because you're going to hear words, you're going to see things, key words are going to stick out for you, points are going to come to your mind. And then you're going to really want to know what it is. And this is going to push you towards what? This is what's going to push you towards um, wanting to know the meaning of that hadith. There are six ways that scholars, if you look at it today, there are six ways that the scholars have written in knowing who the Prophet was, right? Are we, are we all together, brothers? Six ways. But ulama wrote six methods, six different turq six different paths in how a person can know the Prophet. The first one they wrote is books like Dala'il al-Nubuwa. Books that are called Dala'il al-Nubuwa. What, what does Dala'il al-Nubuwa mean? It means books that speak about evidences that the Prophet Muhammad was a messenger sent from Allah. There's books that are written in it. Are we all together? Ibn Kathir wrote a book like that. Al Imam al-Bayhaqi wrote a kitab like that. Abu Nu'aym al-Asfahani, Am al-Asfahani, he wrote a book in that field. Are we all together? The second books are, that are written like that are the seerah of the Prophet, like seerah ibn Hisham. And other books of seerah, the Prophet's actual biography, where you study when he was born, when he died, what, what. Are we all together? This gives you an understanding who the Prophet was. The third is books that are written in khasais al nabi things that are specific and unique for him and no one else shares with him. They are unique things that he, only he has, alayhi salatu wasalam. That he's the only person who can do and no one else can do it with him. <coughs> Scholars have written books on that. Ibn Mulaqin has a kitab on that. Ibn Mulaqin, he has a kitab on the Prophet's khasais. And even if you look at the kitab al fusul fi sirat al-Rasul by Ibn Kathir, at the end he talks about khasais al nabi al fusul fi sirat al-Rasul, written by Ibn Kathir, when he speaks about the Prophet's biography from birth to death, at the ending of it, what does he speak about? At the ending, he speaks about khasais and nabi things that are specific to him, no one else shares with him. That's three, right? I mentioned three. Fourth one is shama'il al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet's actual description, how he looked, how his, how his height was, how tall and he was, alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, they wrote books on that, scholars. And that gives you what? And the, the, the love of uh, appreciating him, alayhi salatu wasalam, admiring him, because you know now how he looks. Are we all together? And when the person studies the Shama'il al Muhammadiyya, like the book Tirmidhi wrote, and others have written it, but Al Imam Tirmidhi was the first what? وأول من ألف
who was the first one to write it, Tilbi. He described everything of the Prophet that you need to know. A person who studies a book like, book like that would be honored and privileged to see the Prophet in their dream. Because the Prophet is, is, is he not seen in the dream? But he can't be seen in the dream. And if the Prophet is seen in the dream, is it him that you saw or is it someone else? Huh? Yeah, sure. You have to see him. Like you have to see him as a Prophet. What if you see a man who's got a big mustache and no beard in your dream? Huh? Is that the Prophet? And he's shaking women's hands. Yeah? Is that the Prophet Ali Sasa you saw in the dream? Huh? He said, you know, he didn't see the Prophet Ali Sasa. He saw a communist. Sir? That's what you saw, you didn't see the Prophet Ali Sasa, sir? So Ali Sasa said, he never shook a woman's hand. The Prophet never cut his bed. So you have to see him first. Then Shaitan cannot imitate the Prophet. Sir? But Shaitan can imitate the few communists, right? Can he? He can't. That's Shabayi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number five, the fifth way that scholars have written works to know who the Prophet is, Hukuku Nabi. Rights that the Prophet has, Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are we together? The Prophet has rights, right? Upon us. Scholars have written books in the Hukuku Nabi, the Prophet's rights. The kitab that you can see on that is Shifa. Shifa by who? Qadi Iyam. Qadi. Al-Iyab, he has a kitab, Al-Shifa, it's called Al-Shifa, for the Quran, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are we all together? And last but not least, the sixth method that scholars have written books in knowing the Prophet Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is by what? Ilm al-Hadith al-Sharif. Books of Hadith. Studying hadith books gives you an understanding of the Prophet Are we all together? <coughs> Study al and Nawi. You see the Prophet was sitting one day, he really came in, okay, now you learn the Prophet he used to sit on the floor. And then he would sit with his companions, and etc. The hadith books, what do you learn? You learn the Prophet and it gives you an understanding of who he was. A Bedouin man comes to him and grabs the Prophet and he pulls him. It gives you an understanding of who he was. Through these ahadith, you get to know him, alayhi salatu wasalam, how he was in his prayer, and etc. Et Are we all together? And then when you don't read books of hadith, you're very deficient in knowing who the Prophet is. You're what? And books of hadith are many, right? One of the books that give you a good understanding of the Prophet's fourth hadith of the Real Sahih gives you it. And every other book that are there, Lulu and Marjal, Fima Tafakari, Shaykhan, books of Ahkam, for example. Books which are Ahkam, like Sunnah and Dawood, gives you how the Prophet prayed and how he was a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you get to know him. He defines the Prophet for you. And so one time, what I thought was making a period of time where we define the Prophet and who he was and speak about him. In each of those six, we pick one book for it. Sahih? Are we all together? We pick one book and we speak about it. And we say, this is the book that we're going to tackle in inshallah ta'ala study. So, it would be a complete round, what? Knowledge of the Prophet After that, you'll find a gene, a generation, whose role model will be the Prophet they would admire him and look up to him So it's, it's necessary that a person studies the Prophet ourselves from those two angles. Ala kulli hal. Tirmidhi's understanding of what this means and what he understood from it. Has anyone looked into it? Can we have a guess then if somebody... Can anyone here? Try their best to realize what he means by it. Which is? Between the law of 
Okay. What do you mean by that? Break it down for us, Abbas. Hasan al and Sahel al there's a category in between them. Yes. Such, like, in what way? How would that, if we did say that there's a category in there, what would it entail? What would it mean? For example, I like the way you're thinking, it's true. One of the ways to outcome an issue like that, you would actually need to break the categorization that the muta'akhirin done. And this is one of the biggest problems that happen. Are you real together? The, the late comers will do something, they will categorize something in a particular way, and then what would happen is that their categorization, they would force the early generation to follow that. صح? Or their definition of it. This definition that you're giving is a definition which is hadith aslan. Are we all together? It's a newly introduced definition. Salaf didn't use it like this. They used a different meaning. Okay? So this is one thing that has to be understood. So mashallah, that's good. You're going the right direction. But what is, break it down for us what you mean by that. So for example, uh, Okay. And Sahih al is when you bring in the strengthening it because there's more than one narration of the narrator. There's more than one? Yeah, there's more than one narration of each narrator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So in the middle, is, there's not enough to say that it's, it's Sahih al but there's enough to say that it's Hassan al Like We have these narrators, so there's not enough then for us to strengthen it to the Sahih al Is it called the, what's that chart called where the, they, they intercross? By chart. Part. Pie chart. The Venn diagram, that's what it is. The Venn diagram where basically they intercross. So there, there has to be something like that for Tirmidhi here right now. In order for the Hassan and the Sahih to come together. Huh? Abu Bakr, you're back finally. Hey, what do you think? There's different levels of? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. More authentic. Uh-huh. 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 Now, that's what Tirmidhi means, rahimahullah. That the hadith which is Hassan, what definition did he give it? What was the definition he gave? What did he say? It has to be more than? First, what was the first point he mentioned? Three conditions. First one is what? No one? No one is accused of lying in the chain. Okay, good. One? It's not shared. And what? And if, if there's all the more than? But what's missing from it that we want, we were looking for? What's missing from it that we, we, we're not, we haven't mentioned here? That we need for a hadith to be sahih? That's missing from here. The chain would be connect, connected, right? So if a hadith gets chain connected, what's ha- what, 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 what would it be? It would also be sahih and it would also have the hasan there as well. Sah? That's what tirmidhi meant. Does that make sense? So what did we say that the hasan was? When the three points are there, right? If the hadith then gains connection of its chain, According to Tirmidhi, now it's Hassan because it meets the three definitions that he gave it. And there's an additional condition that's there right now, which is what? The chain being correct connected. Does that make sense? So for him, the three that's there and the additional thing that's in this hadith that he's found in it has said to him, that extra addition is only for the Sahih. Are you with me? So he says it's Sahih. And it's also Hassan, because it's got the condition of Hassan there. Does that make sense, brothers? That's what he means, Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah. In, in very, very summarized discussion, inshaAllah ta'ala. Okay, now we're going to go into وَزِيَادَةُ رَاوِيهِ مَا مَقْبُولَةٌ مَا لَمْ تَقَعْ مُنَافِيَةٌ مَا تَقَعْ, sorry, مُنَافِيَةً لِمَنْ هُوَ أَوْثَقُ 
Ibn Hajjah rahimahullah now moves on to a mas'ala which is very important, which is called al-ziyadah wa hukmiha. Here, mas'ala to ziyadati wa hukmiha. We're going to go into the issue of al-ziyadah, additional information added into the hadith by a person who's what? A person who's what? He's reliable. His integrity is what? It's high. He adds something into a hadith. Ibn Hajar says, وَزِيَادَةُ رَاوِيهِمَا مَقْبُولَةٌ If a person who's, had, who's got integrity, his memorization is there, he adds something onto a hadith, it is accepted مَا لَمْ تَقَعْ مُنَافِيَةً as long as it does not oppose لِمَنْ هُوَ أَوْثَقُ Anyone who is what? Anyone who is reliable, trustworthy. Are we all together? So a person adds, it, he adds here means, not that he take, brings it to you in his own pocket, we don't mean that. We mean that his narration has an additional information in it, but that additional information has no opposition. It doesn't disagree, it doesn't go against other narrations that are out there that have also narrated the same incident. An example of this, very common, is the issue of moving your finger in the salah. Moving your finger like this. If you look at all the riwayat that have come, are we all together? All of the riwayat that have come, they've all mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to point, وَكَانَ يُشِيرُ Ishara is both being used here. But we have one particular narration that said something in that narration that the other narrations didn't mention. Which is what? وَكَانَ يُحَرِّكُهَا And he used to move it. This information, which is that he moved it, is not found in any other narration. And it is only found in a one particular narration. So the scholars of Hadith, scholars of Hadith, some of them, they crossed out this Hadith, they weakened it, the, the, thing, the moving of the finger, based on the fact that this only particular narrator narrated this. It's a strange narration. And they authenticated what? The other narrations. Uh, the other narrations meaning the one that says that the Prophet just pointed. Are we all together? So they said that you're not allowed to move your finger in the prayer when you're in your tashahud. You can't do this. You just need to keep your finger straight. The reason is because it's shad, they said. And what's the shad? Shad is a mukhalafa. It's an opposition. Sah? That op there's an opposition here. This person's information is opposing the other people. From the scholars that believe this to be the case was Shaykh Muqbil ibn Hadil Wadi'i. That's what he considered it to be shad. Shaykh Runa Shaykh Salah al Fawzad considers it to be shad. He believes it's weak. Shaykh Fawzad gives the fatwa, you're not allowed to move your finger. And many others do that as well. Many scholars believe that. That that narration is what? That narration is? That narration is shad. That narration is what? It's weak. That, that narration is weak. And that's not the case. The reason it's not the case is because the moving of the finger is not an opposition. Sahih? In the Arabic language, if a person says to another person, come, and he moves his hand like that, are we all together? He tells him, come, come. He moves his hand when he's telling him to come. Or if he just points at him, he says, come here. And he doesn't move his hand when he's talking to him. He says, come here. Are we all together? In the Arabic language, all of them are ishara. Whether the tahrik happens or whether it doesn't happen, it still falls under ishara to point at something. Sah. So moving your finger, does it go against pointing? It doesn't. 
There's no muna what they say. وزيادة راويهما مقبولة ما لم تقع منافية لمن هو أوثق. As it, as long as it what? As long as there's no there's no خلاف here. There's no نفي. Like one is not affirming something, the other is negating it. For example, one is narration saying that the prophet pointed, another narration saying he didn't point. This is what? This is now shad. We can say this is munafiyat. He's opposing and he's going against and he's negating what they have affirmed. Sah. Are we all together? Like in tahrik, moving it and pointing it, both of them are in every single narration. Meaning the ma'an is in there. Are we all together? And Shaykh Muhammad Nasir al-Din, rahimahullah ta'ala, he authenticated that. That's why he authenticated it based on the Senate. And this is mas'ala which is called ziyadat al thiqa this chapter, is, this chapter the scholars call it, this chapter the scholars they call it, ziyadat al thiqa Ziyadah, ziyadat al thiqa The thiqa a person who is extremely high in integrity, okay, Ziyadat al thiqa the person whose integrity is great and it's very high. The ahadith that they that we find in their wordings, extra information that we find in it. As long as he doesn't oppose the rest and there's no meaning that goes against it, then it's also it's accepted. And inshaAllah ta'ala, this issue of ziyada to thiqa, is it maqbul or is it mardud? If it's maqbul, is it with shurut, with conditions, or is it without conditions? We'll carry on that, inshaAllah ta'ala, next lesson. It needs a lot of inf- uh, explanation uh, for that and the ruling regarding it. Because there is a extreme tasahul in it. There's extreme what? It's one of those matters people just take very lightly. And either accepting it or either rejecting it. So inshaAllah ta'ala, we'll speak about it in more details next lesson. Anything which I have said that... Uh, was wrong is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayhi.